you guys ready to go? Yes. Amen. We said it walking out of the prayer room there. Wind them up, Lord. Wind them up. <laughs> Let's pray, guys. Y'all stand up. Let's pray. It's going to be a great night. I feel like we're going to hear a good word. <laughs> Let's pray, guys. Gracious Heavenly Father, this night is yours. Father God, I pray right now, Lord God, you just anoint these speakers and anoint their lips, Father God. Wind them up, Father God, and wind us up, Father God. Let the Holy Spirit fall on this place like never before, God. Father, I pray you just have your way here tonight, Father. Father, I pray if there's one soul here that doesn't know you, Lord, I pray today's the day. Father, I pray for that one right now that's struggling, Father God, that today's the day. Today's the day of redemption, Lord. Today's the day of salvation, Father God. Today's the day of deliverance, Father. Father God, I pray you anoint these three speakers, Father, in this pulpit like they've never seen before, Father God. Father, I pray and rebuke any nervousness in their body. Any anxiety that's in their body. Father, I pray right now and rebuke any butterflies in their body, Father God. Father, I pray you turn them loose, set them free, Father God. Wind them up and turn this place upside down. <laughs> God, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're getting ready to do here tonight. Father, what an exciting night, Lord. What a word you're going to bring through these speakers, Father God. How you've changed their lives, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray that they hold nothing back. They pour it all out, God. God, you gave 100%, 100%. Father, I pray they give 110%, Father God. God, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're getting ready to do. Watch over us, Father God, and just open our eyes and hearts to receive it. In Jesus' holy name and all God's people said. Amen. Let's get her done. Praise God, beloved church family. Welcome to the pulpit, Brother David. You know, the Holy Spirit, when Joey talked to me last week, he said, I want you to do the beginning. And so I said, okay, that's going to be Genesis. And I started going home, and I read it. I read over it, everything about it. And after I got through all of Genesis reading it, he said, no, that's not what I want. So I said, okay, tell me what you want. So I said, so he said, uh, the beginning. So I said, well, maybe once enthusiastic time for, and so I started looking up things to go with it again he said no he said I want the beginning so I found what I believe to be the beginning for maybe some who uh, needs to be outreached from maybe from uh, distant who's been away from religion for a while or whatever or God not religion because religion is nasty but they've been away from God for whatever reason so I found several different things in my notes and um, I went through it but I named my uh, sermon, Jesus Needs to Be Your Best Friend. And can I get an amen on that? Because it's just by itself. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. But um, here it goes, and hopefully it's decent for you, everybody. Uh, God wants each of us to experience a life that has meaning, direction, love, peace. God makes this kind of life possible through a personal relationship with His Son, Jesus Christ. And everyone knows that course Jesus Christ died upon the cross for us he came to earth as a just an infant child and he was poor didn't even have enough money to pay for his own tombstone but he uh, died for our sins because that was what God wanted him to do and when he did and of course I'm just kind of touching base right now but when he died for our sins he didn't he died for everybody's sins not just mine not just yours he dies for everybody's sins you got the option to uh, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or you got the right to or choice to go to hell. It's a choice as plain and simple as yours. No one else is yours. But one of the things He has a plan in your life for your life, and this is John three two seven. No one can receive anything unless God gives it to them from heaven first. And it went on and wrote some other notes. God created you and has a plan for your life. To those who plans, you must know God personally. Again, you got to know who He is. Okay. Anyway, you got to know who He is, and you got to you got to actually you got to have a relationship with Him. You just can't um, 
uh, whitewash it and go through the motions of it. You've got to know who he is. God always got a meaning for everything he does, whether it's, you know, whatever it may be, but he's always got a meaning for it. Um, this one is see, John 6.35. I am the bread of the life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And that by itself is just a powerful speaking because anything you need, the Lord's going to provide for you because he always steps ahead of us anywhere he goes. So, I mean, if you truly believe and t- give yourself to the Lord, he's just going to be there for you. So always put God first because, like I said, he had sent his son to die upon a cross for us. And he loves us that much to do that. Um, Many people seek meaning and purpose for their life, but they never find it because they're always looking in the wrong place, wrong people, whatever it may be. And, but, you know, then, uh, when you follow God's plan in life, the most important of which to is to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You will find meaning and purpose in that in things you do. And believe it or not, it will actually make it a lot easier on you when you have the Lord in your front of you, taking in charge of you. So... Um, God has plans to bring peace upon your body. This one is uh, fourteen uh, John fourteen twenty seven. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. The peace I give is the gift that the world cannot see. Give, so do not be troubled or afraid. And of course, everybody knows the gift that is given is the Lord Jesus Christ. He died upon the cross for us. I got an echo come in. When you follow Jesus as your Lord's Savior, you will be at peace with God. You will also be filled with God's peace. So when troubles come, you will be able to have peace as you endure hardships. And, you know, whenever you talk about the, the, um, God's plans, he would love you so much that after Jesus died, the comforter, he, Jesus said the comforter will come back to you, and he'll be in everybody. So that's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So he'll be in everybody's body. All you got to do is listen to him, and he can talk to you all the time. Um, me, personally, I don't always have a tendency to sit still long enough to hear, but I definitely heard him plenty this past week. So, <laughs> but anyway, but yeah, like I said, it's, uh, just listen to him, and he'll be there to comfort you anytime you need it. God's plan is for you to live with him in heaven. And that is ultimate goal. That should be everybody's ultimate goal is to be in heaven and just be up there with God and Jesus at the right hand of the Father. And you got all your uh, people in the Bible. You got Moses. You got David. You got everyone else up there. You get to see them, and ask corrections to them, and see what they're truly like up in heaven. You know, down here we got the Bible to go by, and that's awesome because that's God's word. But up there, you actually get to see everybody and be everybody. And when you get up in heaven, you're gonna have a perfect body again. You ain't going to have to have no suffering, no aches, no pains. So, and it's a whole lot better than the uh, alternative choice, which is fire pits of hell. So, um, God plans for you to live in his heaven. Uh, let's see, I've done that down right now. Okay. Um, for this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. That's John 3.16. That's one probably everybody knows, at least portion of the saying of it. And, you know, even back in Adam and Eve, before Adam and Eve sinned, they had a relationship with God. He was always there. And after Adam and Eve both ate the fruit, the forbidden fruit, then, of course, God took the uh, paradise away from them. He made them actually have to work the fields and everything else because he's always punishing them. So that's a new beginning for them. And when they had kids, they would put them in labor and made them hard for them to have kids. So that's how he punished them, but yet they still had, he still loved them enough to give them a new beginning. So that's, that's kind of the first thing that we thought about to go on. But um, uh, so let's see, Shane, you got that one? Okay. Um, now, whenever you was like accepting Jesus Christ and God, the Holy Spirit, into your life, you got to you got to confess your sins. You got to recognize that you're a sinner because there's only one perfect person. That was your Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone else who um, ever been here, every man, every woman has sinned. And if you do not repent of your sins, first of all, 
there's nothing that you ever do. You'll be in pits of hell with the devil. And hell is real because Jesus talked about hell more than he did heaven throughout the Bible in the New Testament. So he's always there. Um, of course, the devil, he can sit there and deceive you in many different ways. Uh, Pastor Joey said whenever he talked to Eve, he was trying to be all nice and polite to her and give compliments and everything else. Probably so, because he is a deceiver. Um, so you, uh, to recognize you're a sinner, this is uh, Romans 3.23. For everyone has sinned, we all fall short of God's gracious standard. And I just said that, but anyway, now I read it. So you actually know what's at in the Bible. Uh, at the, the scripture says, no one, no one is righteous, not even one. That's Romans 3.10. So everything I'm saying is in the Bible. It's all backed up from the Bible, what I'm saying. And the Bible is true from the very beginning to the very end. It's written all in God's hands. So everybody who's wrote it is in God's hands. And if you look at the Old Testament and you look at the New Testament, there's so many of them correspond with each other. And it's just, it, some people say, Old Testament is not for us. It is. It's for everybody because you'll still find things in it right now that is relevant to the day. So, uh, ask Jesus for forgiveness. And that is uh, Colossians 1.22. Yet know he has re reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ. In the physical body, as a result, he has brought you into his own presence, and you are the holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. So that's when every knee will bow. When you go to heaven, when you die, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess to the Lord Jesus Christ, to God, and he'll either say, welcome, a kind and faithful servant, or be gone from me. I do not know you. And again, so you made you got sure you got choices. So let's go by them, live them. Turn away from sin. This is one John three nine. Those who have been born into God's family do not sin because God's life is in them. So they cannot keep on sinning because they are children of God. And that's so true. I mean, you might still sin from time to time, and you might mess up, and you might have backslides or whatever. But God is there. He's always going to be there. He's in front of you. He's directing the path. All you got to do is listen and watch and listen, let him lead you into the right path. Amen. All right. Now, this is, uh, this is talked about Acts, Acts uh, 12. And this is probably more politically incorrect now than it was back then. But today it's popular for to say that everyone is going to heaven or that all paths lead to heaven. That's not true because there's going to be people who are going to sin or maybe drugs or alcohol or um, have affairs outside of marriage, whatever the case may be. And in, if they do not repent of their sins or if they do not forgive people of their sins, they're going to hell. There is no other way around it. And so with that being said... And let's see, Jesus, uh, let's see, I got another one. This is John 3, 6, John 3, 36. Jesus warns, warns us that no other path exists that can consequence for rejecting this truth is eternity in hell. He told us that whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains in him. Some would argue that this is really a shrine, bold, or whatever, a God to say there's only one way to heaven. But realistically, it's, I mean, he sacrificed his own son to come down here on earth and live here on earth for 32 or 33 years. And when he died, he was crucified, suffered, and died and was buried. And while he was died, he went down to hell and led everybody out of hell who was his people. Amen. So there used to be a holding area. You used to have a holding area or whatever. But now, whenever you die... You go straight to heaven, and you go right there at the foot of God, and you have to answer to your sins right then and there. Amen. And there's no one can ever pray you in heaven. There's no one who can. Um, there's no church service that's going to bring you more prayers. The only thing that can ever bring you to heaven is your personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. No one else can. Yeah. Many people... 
many people today have a watered down gospel that goes that does not always need to be repentant. They want to believe in the loving, non judgment God who never mentions and uh, sins and never requires change in their life. They may say things like, My God would never send a person to hell. Jesus spoke more about hell than he ever did about heaven. Uh, this one is John 14, 16. I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And I love that one right there. Um, uh, he who knows the Son, this is a John, 1 John 5, 12. He who knows the Son has life. He who does not know the Son of God does not know and have life. So again, if you do not know Jesus, what are you? You're nothing but a number, waiting for your time to go to hell. Um, this is John 3, 1, 8. Those who respect Christ are not. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe and stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God and the one Son. So, as repeating myself again over and over again, but this is very important that everybody gets the idea of it because if you do not have Jesus Christ, God, and the Holy Spirit all in one, you ain't got nothing because you got to have all three of them in one to be able to exist. The Holy Spirit is inside of our hearts, and He's always going to be there. Like I said, you'll hear Him, He'll speak to you, and He's always there. But you got to have all three of them. You can go through, you can go through the um, the motions of having God the Father and Jesus. But if you ain't got the Holy Spirit, you ain't got nothing. You're still going to be left in hell. So always have the Holy Spirit in your heart. And how do you get the Holy Spirit? You can sit there, you can ask God, say, I, you know, I need to have the Holy Spirit in me. I want, you know, I want all of you so I can be less of me. And you keep doing it like that, and that's just a repentative sign. You know, then you got to repent of your sins. you got to constantly... Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Amen. Now, as awesome as the heaven sounds like it's going to be with the streets gold and you have a perfect body and everything like that, just imagine what, how, all, uh, how bad hell will be by itself. Hell by itself is just, we had a video or recording once in here in church, and it was people just screaming in torment constant screaming toward me because you know it's so painful so agonizing whether whether you it's uh, hot down there or whatever but you're living a life of misery your entire for eternity and that could be that you see your family up in heaven or whatever having the best time you'd be down there in hell seeing them but they can't see you because they're they got no worries no concern so that could be hell enough for anybody because if I'm up there, if, if I was happy to go to hell and I had to see my family, that would be torture for me. But, okay. Now, <clears throat> I got some of these biblical numbers and their meanings. I just picked up four of them. I got it from Elder Charles. And uh, I'm going to do today's date, which is 1-14-2023. And one, of course, is unity. Being together, unite. Unified in the church body. And 14 is deliverance or salvation, which is right along with what I've been saying anyway, because if you don't deliver, if you don't repent of your sins, what are you going to have? You ain't got to have a salvation. So you got to have salvation before you get to go to heaven. And then um, 20 is repentance. Again, you got to say you're sorry and all that. And these are just the dates. 23 is death. So, you know, and that was, so you got unity, deliverance or salvation, you got repentance and death just from day's date. Um, a few other ones, number 20, 22, I like this one just because we got two grandbabies and one daughter who's on the birthdays on the 22nd, and this is light. So I always like 22, that's always the number we play or whatever, but... Uh, all right, I guess that rounds it up. I appreciate y'all's listening. Have any questions? I did have one more thing. I want to do that, but I ain't going to do that. No.
Ale ci wie. Oh my goodness. God is good all the time. It does just keep getting gooder and gooder. Amen. Brother David, we are so proud. He's so blessed. Glory be to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. At this time, we'd like to welcome to the pulpit from Greensburg, Kentucky. Are y'all from Greensburg? Yeah. Praise well, God. I was going to be embarrassed there for a minute. Green, huh? Green County. Green, Green County. See, praise God for a beloved brother to chime in because I don't even know what that's all about. But did you? Did, did. Okay. They make it out there in, in Greens County? They're the only one. <laughs> brother Ryan said they're the only ones that drink it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's welcome <laughs> Brother Alex Hutcherson. Oh, y'all got to get louder than that. Praise God. Y'all get louder than that. Hallelujah. Check one? Okay, yeah, it's good. Love you, Terry. Thank you. All right, how's everybody doing? Everybody got a full belly? Okay. I'm not used to this headset thing. I can't, I can't turn away and, you know. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. All right. So, uh, at the last Emmaus walk, this, at the, uh, the fourth day, seen Joey, and Joey's like, Holy Spirit put it on my, my heart to have you speak. And I was like, Shh, I don't know. He's like, God told me you're ready. And, uh, I was like, all right, I'll do it. And then I didn't hear from him. We, we exchanged numbers, and I didn't hear from him. And I was telling Jane, and I was like, well, maybe he ain't, he ain't going to call me. Maybe he forgot or something. And then sure enough, not too much long later, he get, he texts me, and, and we set this thing where he sets it up and gives me a time and date and stuff. And, but, you know, it's that's how, that's how we let God work through us and, and be obedient. Obedience. It's it's putting myself on the back burner and glorifying God because I could be here all night telling y'all the blessings that that He's given me and the way He's looked out for me all these years. Um, the song "There Was Jesus" uh, that, that's one of my favorite songs because throughout my whole life, uh, even when I wasn't close to God, fam family prayers, you know. Prayers work, prayers uh, protect, and prayers prayers are special. All right, so I'm going to get this started. I'm going to give my testimony. I've never given my full testimony before. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of nervous. I've given bits and pieces here and there. and uh, But here we go. All right. So I was only I'm an only child. Uh, grew up in Greene County. Born and raised. Still live there. Uh, my parents divorced before before I was even one. I don't have any memory of of a complete house. So broken home. Mom never had another man around. I went to my dad's on the every other weekend. It, he lived in a different county, and uh, my mom pretty much raised me up. Uh, did a good job. Uh, she did. A, I, I wouldn't change nothing, put it that way. I was a mama's boy. And uh, and I was raised up by mom and everybody on her side of the family for the most part. Dad's side of the family kind of shunned me out in a sense, but my dad loved me, and so I got to spend time with him every other weekend, and uh, 
And so I didn't get to didn't get to have a real father figure that much. But my grandfather stepped in on my mother's father. And he was he was my dad. He uh taught me the importance in, of being a man. Uh made sure I was in church. Definitely made sure I was in church. We all went to church together. And uh and I'm really thankful for him and the things he taught me. Uh, he, he was a good father figure. He was a grandfather figure. But uh, but again, I had good church roots. Uh, we went, Mom made sure I was in church every Sunday morning at least. And I, I remember whenever it was the time for the kids to come up and the deep and wide and, and all that stuff. It's good. It's good. I mean, it, it was it was fun, you know. It was fun as a kid. And then uh, I started getting older, of course. And the older I got, closer to the teenage years, the less interest I had in church. And uh, so, but at eight years old, I did get saved. I did get saved at eight years old. But. I'd only done it because I seen my friend that I was going to church with do it. So I was like, oh, he's going up there and doing that. And I'm like, I want to do it too. Well, it was just the motions of it. And I just wanted, I wanted that attention, I guess, with a child whenever you see someone else, another kid get that attention. But I did, I did do that at eight, so I thought. But as I got older, I, steer, uh, I veered farther away from church. And at 11, I took the initiative to talk to my dad about learning to play guitar. He was a musician and played music. I got to see many band practices at the house whenever I'd go over. Of course, therefore, I'd also see other stuff. Thank you. Uh, I got to see other things down there, substances and such. But... I really didn't know what it was. I was too young. I knew what the drinking was, but I didn't know what the other stuff was. But uh, but I wanted to play guitar, and, and he showed me. He uh, got the training wheels on me, and, and I took off with it. And that's pretty much where it all started. Um, Dad had a band, needed another guitarist. So who better than <laughs> this little man learning how to play? So they took me in under their wing. I was going out to the field part. I, was, I played in a bar at 13 the first time, you know, keg party. At the time, I thought it was fun. I mean, I mean, at the time, I mean, I thought I was living it up. I'm like, yeah, get to do all this stuff with adults, with the big guys. Well, so after not long in that in that period. My parents kind of let me make my own decisions. I was allowed to make decisions that I shouldn't have been able to to make. And by the time I was 16, I'd done been, I'd, I'm already hooked on drugs, alcoholic, cocaine and meth, uh, doing drugs at home, doing drugs with my mother and father, two different households, and I'm doing drugs. And I got my DUI at 16. And by the time I'm 17, I graduate at 17, and I move out. I'm ready to attack this world wide open with whatever's in my mind at the time because there wasn't much in my mind at the time other than just partying. But uh, but I hit, I hit it wide open at 17 and move into the drug dealer's house. And during this time, I am pretty much straying away from my grandfather and my mother's side. And looking back, I can really tell where, where prayers come into play. Because during this time, if it, wasn't been for, if it hadn't been for them praying, because every time I'd see them, they'd always say, we're praying for you, we're praying for you, we're praying for you. And I, I feel them prayers more so, more so now looking back than I did then. But 
their prayers, I know, are protected. And I'm thankful for, for having a family that, that, does, that did pray and does pray. And I'm very thankful. So uh, I move out. I'm playing music. I'm playing music in Dad's band. And then I have my band. And we were, sometimes we'd play together, sometimes we wouldn't. Uh, playing music four to five nights a week and just no direction just no direction just stuck in the world give you an idea what kind of person I was um, there was a situation where, where uh, we was at a, at a show and again I'm just being real with y'all there was a car of women and there was a car of my buddies and drugs I went with the drugs. I'd always chase the drugs. I was, uh, I was just, I don't know. I liked the way they made me feel. And then, uh, and then in the November of 2006, yeah, no, I'm sorry, five, 2005, my grandfather died. Um, he died of a massive heart attack, or a, no, he died on the operating table after a heart attack. And uh, again, to give you an idea of of how bad it was, and this is one of the things I've had to fight with or move past and still have trouble with it. My grandfather was my father, you know, that's what I say. Even my dad told me, he said, Pa Frog, you know, that's your father, I'm just your friend. And uh, and the night before they took him, the night before they had him scheduled to go in surgery the next morning, I volunteered to stay with him, and and it was getting close to where is it they was wanting him to go to bed and get his rest, and uh, I was like, yeah, I'll be right back, Pa. So I go out in the parking lot and I, I sit and get high, and get a little higher and a little higher. Didn't want to face the reality of what was going on. And uh, he even calls me. And I just let it go to the, the voicemail. It was back when you had the old Nokia phone. You know, the, the big heavy-duty choker. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And and uh, it went to voicemail. And then the next day, well, I, then I go up to my room. And I see he's already asleep. I didn't realize what I'd done at that time, but I did the next day whenever he died on the operating table. You know, I shouldn't have. I always put drugs, I put drugs first before family, before anything. <laughs> the next year, the next months went, were pretty bad, and then nine months later, my father died, a massive heart attack. Still have trouble talking about this. <sighs> the next year, the uh, only thing I did was just try to change how I feel. I hated myself. I hated my life. I hated the world. I just, I couldn't stand to look at myself in the mirror. <sighs> I wouldn't, the music stopped. Uh, the band stopped. I was left with what I felt was with myself and, and a, a mess that I didn't want to accept that I created myself. I wanted to point the finger on everybody else. At the end of 2006 in October, me and my first, or my, my girlfriend, she was soon to be my first wife, found out we were pregnant. I was nervous and excited. And on my 21st birthday on July 14th, my first my daughter was born. It was my 21st birthday. And again, God knew what I needed more than what I did. I really didn't, was unsure about the daughter thing. I was like, you're pregnant. Uh, 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 
Are you sure it's mine? <laughs> I knew it was. But um, but that that's when, when she was born, that really snapped me out of my tunnel vision of, of self-sabotage. And, uh, and God saved my life through her. And no telling how many times he saved it, but this is one that's, that really saved me from my own self-destruction. I had a child of my own to raise now, and uh, I slowly began weeding out the hard drugs. Uh, and started trying to be a good father figure and a good human being. And then I got an offer to get a, for a new job building water towers. Good money, lots of traveling though, but good money. You know, it's, it's, what, it's what a man's supposed to do, provide, right? That's what I thought. But it was hard at first, missing my family. Got worse and worse, but I learned that uh, beer and alcohol help that help subside that feeling whenever you're out there in the motel room and the four walls you look at they get smaller and smaller the loneliness kind of rough without God and your family so uh, I became heavy drinker with, with, with beer and this caused problems with me and my wife I started uh, drinking a whole lot at home and eventually found it my way into pills. And I remember, that I got on pills so bad that I remember this. Uh, my first wife begged me to stop taking them, like literally begged me. And uh, I couldn't. I couldn't stop taking them. And I continued. Until I came home one trip to my daughter's mom with her stuff packed. And she left. And, and that was the end of that. And and it kind of destroyed my, uh, it broke my heart. But, you know, looking back, I don't blame her. You know, it's it, it was my fault. Um, I wasn't willing to let go of the things that I, that I wanted to do. I was still in a selfish mindset. And uh, and I learned that pain pills not only work for physical pain, but they also work for emotional pain. And so I dove in head first into any kind of pain pill. And I continued this pattern until about 2010, Easter. And a guy named Brother Dan Perkins. He had a tobacco barn he was having a revival in. And I got saved for real. Yeah. It, uh, yeah, it was, it, it was good. It was good. I know I got saved. I felt, I, because it, it's, you know when you know, you know when you get saved. That, 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 you know what I'm saying? It, I can't, it's. And uh, it, it really changed me, not quite as much as you, was <laughs> it, it changed me. I mean, I had a good grasp and direction on, on what I'm supposed to do. Uh, I had a, a good ministry I was helping, and, and I was trying to do good, you know, I was doing better. And... I was going to church every time I come in from the road. Of course, when I was out on the road, I really couldn't go to church. We had to work. But I was hitting up church regularly. Uh, and during all this, I, I couldn't play guitar because any time I picked a guitar up, it would be like a trigger for me. I would want, I'd get feel, uh, cravings for, for anything, any kind of substance. So guitar was very far in between. Anytime I picked it, it, it was just for seconds, if maybe minutes. And then uh, in 2012, I met my second wife, who was in a drug program. 
And me usually and occasionally and lying to her and her in the program was kind of toxic from the start. And uh, I lied to her about the drugs, lied to her that I was clean because I was starting to fall back into my old habits. And when I told her the truth, I was surprised to be responded with with, with love. Um, she wanted to help me out. And, and not, you know, kick me out. So I started getting in drug programs with her, going to 12-step meetings, AA meetings, NA meetings. And and I'm thankful for them because I, it, it helped me get a grasp on, a, on what I needed to do. Because in, in my past up to this time, I'd really, I mean, I knew who God was. I knew I was saved. And I knew what I was supposed to do. I just didn't know how to do what I was supposed to do. Um, and and it kind of gave me, they really set me up on my feet to where I, I wasn't just white knuckling it. And I was just, just don't do drugs. Don't, I mean, and that was, that was, a, it was a mess. And, uh, and then I got, I got sober. I mean, I got I got for real sober. Started attending the church more often while at home, because again, it, I was just going in and out. It's always been a roller coaster ride. And then uh, I finally established somewhat of a home life with me working out on the road. But I was sober. The kids seemed happy. We seemed happy, and uh, so I got a job at home. And after ten years of Traveling on the road, I finally established a, get a job in E-Town in 2016. And it, it was a factory job, still welding. And, you know, life seemed seemed like it was going in the direction that, that I felt like I wanted it to. And she winds up getting pregnant, and on April... 11th, 2017, that little blonde-haired fella running around in here, he, uh, he was born, and, and I felt like I was on my feet, I felt like, you know, I, I'm finally doing what I'm supposed to, I'm sober, got the family, got a little man, and for some reason, I got a hankering to start a band again, to give a band one last shot. And of all people, I got with Gary Buckner, my, <laughs> my uh, drummer from the first band we was in. And uh, we started playing music again. Of course, it wasn't gospel or nothing. It was honky-tonk stuff, <laughs> southern honky-tonk stuff. And sure enough, it, it, it was just like it was last time. Uh, got offered some drugs at, at a show, and I did it. And... Right down the rabbit hole again, again, I went, meth this time, meth. Uh, got caught from my wife hiding it, almost caused a divorce. It started by this time, Lexi, she's, uh, she knows what's going on. It's getting an idea, and it was causing problems with her. And I'm quitting going to church by this time. Church was, was just totally out of, out of the question. And and then my wife completes her, her drug program. And what do I do? I drag her down with drugs. And I'm like, you know, you completed the program, just go get high. And that's what we done. And this is this is what started the beginning of the true bottom for me. I thought I'd hit the bottom before, but uh, that all changed whenever I started IV using. Um, my wife was a nurse, and I started shooting up. And I shot up to, you know, it was something new to me, and I actually overdosed on It's hard for me to say because I'm a little girl and a little baby. But uh, 
I was going through, I had elbow surgery, and I had an inline pick, a pick line. I don't know if y'all know what a pick line is, but it's an internal IV line that goes straight to your heart. And uh, I shot up something I wasn't supposed to shoot up. You're not supposed to be able to shoot this up, and I did it. And uh, an overdosing is cold. It's a very, very cold feeling. It's, it's not good, but I heard God say, it's not your time. I've never heard God's voice like this before, but I swear on everything. I knew God had something for me because I thought I was dead. I was like, I'm going to die right here on this couch. And God said, it's not your time yet. Just as clear as y'all hear me on this mic, I swear. And uh, so that scared me, but it didn't stop me. I still kept going. I had to lose my job. I'd get kicked out of the house. Uh, tried finding a bed in some recovery places, some rehabs. No one. It's hard to get. They're so, they're so full. You can't even get a bed hardly. You know, they'll put you on a wait list for, for months, sometimes years. I mean, I felt like I was going to kill myself before I ever get sober. And so I moved back in with my mom. And uh, that's not a very good feeling for a grown man. <laughs> but, but I did, and she welcomed me with open arms. And and helped sober me up like she. And that was hard for me to do because because of how I was raised up. You know, the choices I made after I was 18 and moved out were on me. And, uh, you know, I've funny, I mean, no, it's not funny, but after I moved out, you know, mom sobered up. I was obviously the problem. And that's one thing I've learned through all this is, Whenever my life is chaos, at my job, at home, with my friends, wherever I go, there's one common factor in every bit of that, and it's me. So there's more than likely I'm the problem and causing the chaos. And I see that now. <laughs> but, uh, but so we're going, I'm going through a divorce, living at, living at home with my mom, getting my kids whenever I can, and... I'm just done with the revolving door of, of drugs and alcohol. I'm just through with it. I'm looking for anything to fill this void with other than drugs. Anything. <laughs> and then I go to church at Faith Christian Church in Greensburg. And, and I see Gary on drums. Playing for God. And uh, the preacher T.C. Moore... Uh, and he knew I played guitar, and he was like, would you be interested in playing guitar? My first day there, first day there. And I'm like, I don't know, I have to think about it. He was like, you pray on it. And I was like, okay. And it had been so long since I'd prayed at that time. I was like, okay, yeah. And then the, and I go back the next Sunday. And the next Sunday, he's like, God said you're going to be playing guitar with us. <laughs> and uh and I really didn't know how to how to take it cuz it, it was it was all new to me from from this loving side and I rededicated and then yeah that that's that month I rededicated and uh started playing regularly for Faith Christian Church, and that was in, I think it was in July of, of 20, 2020, I think, but to the point is I've only, I've only missed like maybe five services since, since I started going, and I, I'm, I rededicated my life, I got my kids in church, uh, I can play music again <laughs> with, with, without... I can play music without having to worry about getting triggers. I, I play music for God, for Jesus. And then in 2021, uh, I met Jamie. <laughs> and she really, 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 really was a blessing. 
man, it, it's it was something I'd never really done before, but to worship with my partner and my together, Amen. my companion, to worship together in unity. <laughs> and then, uh, then my daughter, she went on the uh, Hermaeus walk, Hallelujah. and she brought it, you know, you know that fire that comes home. She brought it home, and I'm like, what are you talking about? What are us? And, uh, and then I got to find out for myself, and that was amazing. That was amazing. And, uh, and now we finally got our own home together. We just moved in at the end of last year, close to it, engaged. Woo! And It's about it's about it up to the present point and here oh, and here. I mean, it's thank you guys. I love y'all. Y'all say it with me, it just gets gooder and gooder. Amen. He's the only good one. I thank God Almighty for that powerful, powerful testimony. Amen. Amen. And isn't that entire family in that back row is so beautiful? Amen. Let's give God praise. Amen. Y'all are mighty warriors. Mighty warriors. So just to uh, embarrass, embarrass Brother Alex, because I like to do that, just to embarrass Brother Alex, how many of you are deeply touched from that testimony? <laughs> You just, got to, you just got to see all the saints. I mean, thank you for your obedience, brother. And we are so excited. Hallelujah. I'm going to try to introduce this next one without crying. Praise God. See, you could easily do it with soldier. Amen. Brother Alex, every time I see him, man, we're always smiling ear to ear, hugging each other, twirling each other around. And um, this next guy, oh, praise God. <laughs> my boy blue <laughs> y'all welcome brother adam swallows hallelujah so proud of you. Thanks. what's up everybody <laughs> so yeah i'm nervous a little bit but i know holy spirit's gonna take over I believe that. So, uh, man, God is so good, ain't he? All the time. Uh, uh, I, I'm just so blessed and humbled to be standing right here in front of you guys tonight. <laughs> if you had asked me two years ago, where would I be at in two years? Uh, I probably would have looked at you with a blank stare, just 120 pounds out of my mind. I don't know, probably dead. That's what I would have said to you. I dang sure wouldn't have thought I'd been standing right here in front of you guys tonight. <clears throat> but God, <laughs> hallelujah. Uh, and, and I'll tell you what, I wouldn't have been lying. Because uh, guess what our father did? He killed that person. Yeah. And now I'm a new creation in Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. And I tell you what, it's, it's only gotten gooder and gooder and gooder and gooder. And, and all I want to do, I just want to bless our father. That's all, that's it. That's all I want to do. So tonight I got a, I got a question I want you all to think about. Is Jesus Christ good enough for you? Now, me personally, I mean, that's a tough question. Uh, sometimes I get angry when things ain't going right or, or the way that I want them to go. But I always look for Jesus' help to give me strength. See, the devil... He likes to think that he can just poke at you and get you off your track, get you out of your focus with Jesus. I'm 
open up my Bible here. But, but the devil don't. He don't have no. He don't. He can't do nothing to us. If you're a true child of God, the devil cannot come near you. He cannot touch you. So we gotta quit giving him any kind of. Any kind of. Uh, anything we can't be saying that the devil is gonna do anything because he can't but i want to read right here in uh second corinthians verse 12 or chapter 12 verse 7 through 10 it says uh therefore in order to keep me from becoming conceited i was given a thorn in my flesh a messenger of satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses. So that Christ's power may rest on me. <laughs> You see, even when we're weak, it's the strength of our Lord Jesus Christ that picks us up and strengthens us. In fact, it's through our weaknesses that perfects his powers. <laughs> see, I, <clears throat> I can remember a time when I was ready to end it all. Uh, I, I didn't want to live life anymore. I uh, was in drugs, and they had overtaken me. I was I was ready. I was just ready to end it. it. It was time for me to go. I knew that there was nothing else I could do, but but God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> See, it's through our weaknesses, right? <clears throat> so. Uh, so I'm ready to end it. I got my gun in my pocket. I done told my fiance that it's some silly story because I couldn't end it in front of my kids, right? I didn't want them to see me. Um, I get in my car, and I'm backing up. Start the car, get in reverse, and this car pulls up in my driveway. And, uh, of course, I'm not in my right mind. This is Saturday night, early Sunday morning. My brother PJ jumps out, man. I haven't seen him for, like, two or three years, probably. Jumps out with Pastor Joe and him, and he just gives me a hug. So I was ready to go. This was my moment. I was going to, to end it. And, uh, but God has more, God has more, uh, he's going to use me in it. There at that moment, I gave my life to God. And now, through the power of Jesus Christ, I now have a testimony Hallelujah. that can help deliver souls from the evil one and bring them into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. But how, how, how do I do that? How do I save souls? Because the devil's good. I mean, he knows, he knows more about this Bible than I do. But here's how. You just got to believe. You got to believe that what Jesus done on that cross, that he shed his blood to forgive us to, of our sin. Without him, we're unforgivable people in hell. I mean, that's it. And you got to believe that every word in this Bible is true. Amen. You have to. Uh, just believe in Jesus. That's all you got to do. Believe in Jesus. He's all we need. 
He's the only one who can save us. Amen. Like in Acts uh, chapter 12, uh, verse, chapter 12, verse, or chapter 4, verse 12 is salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. There's just no other name. I mean, I can't save you, Pastor Joe. Nobody can save you. It's only through Jesus Christ. You got to believe that whatever situation you're in, Jesus will provide for you. He will provide for you. Like, like uh, Apostle Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, you see, that doesn't say according to the riches of his glory in you. For it's through Christ Jesus that God will supply your every need. As long as it glorifies Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Man, that's some good stuff right there, I tell you what. (laughs) So back to my question. Is Jesus enough? Amen. Is Jesus enough to get you through whatever it is that you're going through? He is for me. Because I believe, I believe this Bible. I believe in Jesus. And just one more. Let me see. Right here in Hebrews 10, 14. For, it, for by one sacrifice he has made perfect forever. Those who are being made holy forever. Can you imagine forever? I can't imagine forever. Eternity? No. I believe I'm being made holy because I believe in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He's enough for me. He is enough. Guys, I just thank you all for coming out and supporting all of us tonight, man. It's such a blessing to... Thank you for sacrificing your Saturday nights just to come listen to us. Uh, I'm blessed to be standing here, and I, I just thank you guys. Hallelujah. That's all I got. God is good all the time. Oh, my goodness. We have a song that's going to play. No surprise, right? We just won the song. But we had sons of God this evening that just spilled their hearts out, that got uncomfortable. And I thank you with all my heart that you would just worship a good and perfect father, listen, and allow Holy Spirit, say his name, Holy Spirit, allow Holy Spirit to just flood us and flow through us and teach us, amen. At this time, I want to ask the overseers of of the church to come up front, and your wives, if your wives are willing, maybe there's sisters here that will need prayer as we have this song, I don't know. But I'll just be obedient and, and ask all the overseers of the church. And for those of you who don't know, here at Open Arms Community Church, at our altar call, what, what our overseers are doing right now, they're just, they're just giving it all to the Lord, cleansing themselves, and getting ready for when this song starts playing, they're going to step off to the side of the altar. Brother Joey, why do they step over to the side? If you want hands laid on you, if you want prayer, they are there for you. And it's confidential. They ain't going to say nothing. It's just between them and God. But God Almighty has ordained them to bless you with breakthrough in your life. I don't know about you, but how many of you need breakthrough in your life? Amen? Amen? Then let me ask a gooder question. How many of you just want to stay stagnant? <laughs> Everybody's like, I rebuke that, right? <laughs> we Stagnant, last time I checked, stagnant water, stinky water, right? We're like the mighty ocean, amen? And so I encourage you in Jesus' name, will you come up during this song? What's your offering? Now hear my heart. 
relax, I'm not asking for money. Amen? But will you give God an offering tonight? Will you give him? Maybe there's some kind of unforgiveness that you've been struggling with. Maybe there's, maybe you've become, I don't know, crunchy, right? Maybe you're a youth and you've been disrespectful to your parents. You know that's, that's of the hell. That's of the devil. That's, of, that's not God. Guess what? Even my little man right there, you know God talks to you, right, and says, will you give that to me at the altar? I'm the kind of brother that I'm not going to exclude anyone. But I'm going to ask you, in this next song, what about this, church? If you would, stand up with me. Praise God. It's moments like this during a worship service where the enemy tries to roll out his, his, his hardest distractions. And guess what it is? It's being familiar and getting religious with God. Right? What I want to ask every one of you tonight, do you know that you're going to heaven? Is there anyone in this room tonight, maybe you think you were invited here because your cousin, your uncle, whoever was speaking and they just invited you. No, God Almighty wants to save your soul. And if that's you tonight that God forbid, if you don't make it home tonight, God forbid, once again, God forbid, but we're not promised the next breath, family. If that's you, that you don't know where you're going to go, if that's you, that you're like, yeah, you know, I've been playing church, I've been playing Christian, but I really don't have a relationship with God, God says, will you do something about that tonight? If that's you, will you raise your hand? Will you be, will you be proud of the Lord and just raise your hand and say, that's me? Bless you, daughter of God. Bless you, daughter of God. You know what you just did right there shook heaven. What you just did right there, there's your answer. God Almighty said, you're my daughter, and I'll never let you go. I'm going to challenge you because you're bold. You're like a roaring lion, and I don't even have my lion hat on. It's over there. Will you come up front? Let's give God praise. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask the speakers tonight to come up front. Beloved church family, we're going to say a prayer with Sarah. Amen. You know, my God is so good that when she raised her hand, it's already a done deal. Amen. I believe as people, we just get weird, right? And we're not going to get weird on our Lord. We're not religious. And let's bless Sister Sarah in saying this prayer with her. Amen. But we want to do what God has asked us to do. In what we know to do. Amen. So, beloved brothers, I'm going to ask you to lay hands on her because guess what? Holy Spirit used you to speak to her tonight. Not only me. There's one more. Is there one more? Hmm. Yeah. Is there anybody else? Praise God, I believe that. Amen. Sarah, I'm going to ask you a question, and you answer it with all your heart. Amen. Are you ready to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord? Yes. Are you ready to die tonight in him? Yes. Are you ready for Holy Spirit to live inside of you for all of eternity? Yes. Let's give God praise. Amen. Amen. Let's say this prayer together. Say it with me, Father God. Father God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Here I am. Here I am. I love you. I love you. The only way. The only way. I receive you, Jesus. I receive you, Jesus. You are my Lord. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. You are my Savior. And forever. And forever. I am yours. I am yours. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Live abundantly. Live abundantly. In and through me. In and through me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Daddy. Daddy. I love you. I love you. And I'll see you soon. I'll see you soon. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.
can't make, you can't make any of this up. This is why we do this. Amen. This is why we, as one body in Christ, do this. Amen. Man, I, it's just one, right? Come on, family. She's not going to hell. She's forever with us in heaven. Hallelujah. Oh, Sarah, I'm going to annoy you forever. Sarah, I'm going to annoy you forever. Forever, we're family. You're going to be Father God, please tell him to stop. Amen. I love you. Let's come to the altar. Amen. Remember, use the leadership, their anointed of God. Use them. Amen.